Last night, Bill Roche telephoned me. I was on my way to his office. Bill was an MD, a psychiatrist, and a good one. We had known each other for a long time. He told me he wanted to see me. I asked him what it was about. He said that he'd go into details the next day in his office. He told me that he was concerned about one of his patients, a relatively new one. The patient kept saying that he'd committed murder. He didn't say who or when. He just kept repeating that he'd killed a woman. If I tell the police, Mike, you know what'll happen. Sure. I thought maybe you could talk to him. Then, if there's anything to it, find out privately. Suppose he is telling the truth, that he did murder. What then? Oh, I don't know. I guess, well, turn him in. I'll tell you, there are two diagnostic possibilities with this man. Oh, incidentally, his name's Ted Hopkins. Uh -huh. One of the possibilities is dementia precox, schizophrenia, which has an extremely serious prognosis. The other we call a psychopathic personality, which can indicate a mild mental abnormality. Would that mean murder? In the second case, doubtful. In the first case, yes, a very good chance. <laughs> As we drove to the hospital, I kept wondering what I could do to help. The only thing I was positive about was that Bill had wrestled with his conscience a long time before he made up his mind to call me. If it had been anyone else, I would have said no. But I couldn't turn Bill Roche down. I'm going to introduce you as a friend of mine, a writer who's interested in mysteries, murders. It might help him to talk a little more. All right. asleep, just thinking. What do you want? I brought a friend of mine, Michael Lanyard. He's a writer. Well, bully for him. Hi. Right. Blooming, you writer? Interested. In what? A story I heard. Lanyard. You know what a lanyard is? It's a cord sailors have around their necks. They tie knives about it sometimes. You got a knife around your neck, Lanyard? No. Not even a rope. Well, how's this for a plot? I killed a woman. There. Nothing. Nothing? A murderer looks you in the eye and admits his crime. It's no plot. It's a situation. All right, Ernest Hemingway. I killed a woman. was in her house. I waited there till she came home. I waited in her house. It's getting light. Four, five, maybe six o'clock. I lay down on the bed because I was getting sleepy. Then I heard the front door open. I got behind some dresses in the closet. And I had to wait in there, oh, 10 minutes, 10 minutes before she came in the bedroom. And then I killed her. How? How did you kill her? <sighs> Lots of ways. But I tell you this. She knew she was being killed before she died. What did you do with the body? Left it there. Was she your wife? No. Old or young? You sound like a policeman, Mr. Langer. Can you describe her? Yes. Well? Can. But I won't. How did you say you killed her? I didn't. Oh, it's a bad story. I couldn't use it. It's too phony. Oh, I wish it were. It's hard to think about it. What was her name, Ted? I don't remember. 
I don't want to remember. Go away. I don't like your name. It reminds me of knives. Go away, will you? certain now he's telling the truth. At the end there, the way his mood changed, I don't believe he's talking fantasy. Why would he feel he wants to confess and then only go so far? Fear, possibly, a lot of reasons. What would happen if he's released from here and we don't follow it up? He might do it again. Kill. You're positive he's not lying? The fantasy idea, as you call it? Hmm, for myself, I'm positive, but I need more time to reach an official opinion as to whether he's legally sane or not. All right, Bill, I'll do what I can, but I'm no doctor. Mike, Hopkins seems to have lost his trust in me. Now, this isn't that common. Usually, in a case like that, we call in another doctor. On the other hand, he seems to have responded to you. Now, that's not uncommon, either. He's talked more to you than he has for a long time. But you're helping me. I think we can help him. Okay, I'll do what I can. Have you got a file on me? Yeah, I got one here. I got the name of the woman involved in Hopkins' arrest. Carol Palmer. She was living in Hollywood, so I went there. I thought it might give me a lead. Miss Palmer. Yes? I'm Michael Lanyard. May I come in? Oh, I'm trying to get my hair dry. Somebody's calling for me at 7. I'm sorry. It's important, though. It's about Ted Hopkins. Come in. Thanks. Won't you sit down? Thank you. What about Ted, Mr. Lanyard? Well, that's really what I wanted to ask you. Are you a policeman? For the second time today, no. Why? Well, you were asking about Ted. I thought he might be in... In trouble? He might be. He's sick. His doctor wanted me to find out a couple of things. I'm trying to. Were you engaged? I used to think so. What happened? What did you fight about? That time? Oh, he came up one night. He and his mother were fighting. They were always fighting. He was very upset. He said awful things to me, about me, about women. He hated me. I told him he'd better go. Yeah. Then he started to hit me. That's all. Did he try to kill you? No. Who sent for the police? A neighbor. Look, I don't even want to think about it. You didn't prefer charges? No, I just didn't want to see him anymore. Have you seen him since? No. What's the matter with him? He says he's killed a woman. But he won't say who or when. Did he ever tell you anything like that? No. If he's in trouble, I'm not going to say anything to hurt him. He's sick. Inside as well. If he did kill somebody, we have to find out before they release him from the hospital. I loved him. I suppose I still love him, but... I'm afraid of him. Did you ever love someone and yet not like them because you were afraid of them? That's the way it was with him. You see this? This was my accident. He did that. He did it that night. Slowly and laughing. He broke my finger because he didn't want me to play the violin. I used to play, you know, now I just listen. What did you ask me? Do you think he could have killed anybody? I tell you, will it help him? Yes. 
He did say something once. He was angry, hurt. But he said it that once. He said he killed someone, and he wished he could do it again. It wasn't so easy finding Hopkins' mother. I went to the last address noted in the file, which was six years earlier. The owner couldn't give me any information. The directories didn't show anything either. There were plenty of Anna Hopkins, but not the one I was looking for. The next day, Bill and I tried to get it out of Hopkins. He wouldn't even admit to having a mother. Didn't want to talk about it or anything else. I had an idea that if I could find her, there might be a lot of things we could find out. I found what I wanted. Anna Hopkins had remarried two years ago. Her name was Anna Folsom now. I found Mrs. Folsom. She was a high-priced fashion designer. She was busy sketching. She didn't want to see me. I'm Michael Lanyard. It's about your son, Mrs. Folsom. My son, Mr. Lanyard? What about my son? He's in trouble. He's sick and he needs help. Oh? You come with me, please. Yes. Can you tell me something about him? I don't see any reason why I should discuss Theodore with a complete stranger. Look, Mrs. Folsom, your son says he's committed a murder. His doctor and I are trying to get to the bottom of it before the police find out. He did it once. He could do it again. Did he kill a woman? It's a long time ago. He was six. There was a neighbor's child. They always played together. One day he came home. He didn't say anything. I found out later what he'd done. They'd had a fight over something. He had a pocket knife. The little girl was dead. What happened? I sent him away to a school. What else was there to do? We never spoke of it after that. It wasn't anything the authorities could do. He was only a child. They left him in my care. When he came back from the school? He lived in my house, in my care. That was my obligation. And now you say he's killed someone else. Well, I'm afraid there's really not anything I can do about it, Mr. Lanyard. Would you like to see him? He's in the county hospital. What would be the point? It would be embarrassing for us both. We don't like each other. I have my husband, my work here. For the first time in my life, I'm reasonably happy. I can almost forget I ever had Theodore. It's better that way. I'm not interested. Both women were saying the same thing, Bill. But not in the same way. That mother's about the coldest human being I've ever run across, and I've seen some strange ones. Well, at least you cleared up part of it. Maybe all of it. Suppose the woman he says he killed was the little girl. And he's had the guilt of it ever since. I thought of that when you told me. What happens if he kills someone else after the child? Yeah. Well, we have no proof. If he's released from here and it happens again, well, that's a big responsibility, Mike. And unfortunately, it's mine. Yeah, I know. There's one alternative. Tell the police. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Folsom, please. Here, I'll wait. What's the little girl's name? That's what I'm gonna find out. You told us you killed a woman, didn't you, Ted? Ted, what about my name? Lanyard. It reminds you of knives, doesn't it? A lanyard for a knife around the neck? Maybe there's something else about a knife. Take it easy. We're trying to help you. You think you can remember the name of the woman you killed? 
Shall I tell you? It was Emily. Emily Barnhart. I killed her. I killed her. I'm a murderer. I kill everybody. safe now. Dr. Roche, all of us, we want to take care of you. I saw Carol today, Ted. Carol Palmer, she's still in love with you. You're going to get well. I know what you're doing. Don't come any closer. I give you my word, Ted. I won't try any tricks. I'll get some cigarettes for you. I'll be right back. I saw Bill Roche come out with a couple of interns. I didn't want Hopkins to spot them. I explained to Bill that his presence might cause Hopkins to jump. I told him I wasn't sure that I could prevent him from jumping anyway. I suggested he get Carol Palmer right away, that maybe she could prevent Hopkins from committing suicide. He agreed it was worth a try. I told him to keep the interns on the roof, and that if I was lucky, I might be able to get close enough to Hopkins to grab him. As I went back to the ledge, I knew I had to be lucky. Because if Hopkins panicked, he'd carry us both down to the street below. It wasn't a pleasant thought. I want a cigarette, but I don't trust you. You're too smart. I told you, Ted, no tricks. There's nobody up here but me. When you reach for it, hang onto the railing. I don't want you to fall. six feet away from you. I won't try and grab you. That'd be silly. We'd both go over. I don't want to die just yet. I do. I felt like it for a long time. That's what I want to talk to you about. Maybe you'll feel differently, huh? I'm coming over, thank you. Listen to me, Ted. You've been causing a lot of trouble, mostly to yourself. That's not necessary. You're a bright guy, Ted. That's why I'm talking to you like this. I want you to listen to me very carefully. I know about the woman you killed. How do you know? Dr. Roche and I wanted to help you. We made it our business to find out. I don't want to think about it. You've been thinking too much. Talk about it now. Do you remember her name? No. It was Emily. Emily Barnhart. You said it was late when she came in. Four, five, six o'clock. You were feeling sleepy, so you lay down on the bed. And you saw her come in. I don't remember. You've got to remember. Emily came in and you were hiding in a closet. How did you kill her? No. No. You had a pocket knife with you, didn't you? Please. All right. You killed her. You know when it happened? How long ago that was, do you? I won't listen. I won't listen anymore. You had a quarrel earlier, didn't you? She wouldn't let me play with the spade in the yard. I told her I'd get even. Why were you hiding in the house? I just wanted to frighten her. That was all. 
when she came in. And when she came in, she wasn't frightened. She was just, just mad. And she told me to go. And I, I, I don't remember anything then except that I just wanted to kill her for laughing at me. You were only six, Ted. I was a murderer. You were a kid. Sick, maybe. That's not the kind of murder you're thinking about. You can forget it. Dr. Roach can help you, too. It's, it's too late. It's too late. You've got no guts, Ted. I told you about Carol. She needs you. And all you can think about is making things easy for yourself. That's your trouble. Time for you to grow up, mister. You're not a baby anymore. I'm tired, Lanyard. Just leave me alone. I... I'm sorry. Somebody didn't do something about him long before this, when he was a kid. He's got his mother to thank for that. Thank you, Benson. That's a funny thing, Mike. A man gets TB or cancer, he's treated, taken care of. But a mental disease, whisper that, and that's nasty. Only thing people don't realize is that there's no difference between the two. They're both illnesses, nothing more. Is he going to be all right? It's going to take time, but I think so. That Palmer girl's going to do a big part of it. She'll give him something to work for. Nice girl. She still in there with him? Yes, I figured it was the best therapy for the moment. Nice treatment. Mike, I'm going to take you out and buy you the best dinner in this town. If that's your prescription, doctor, I'm a new patient. You know, I'd have had to have turned him over to the police if it had been anything else but what it was. Tough decision. I mm, have no idea. Well, when Ted leaves here, I won't have to worry. Because he's not going to leave until I'm satisfied that this kind of thing can never happen to him again. He's got a lot to thank you for, Mike. And so have I. Your emotions are showing, Doctor. Let's go. 